The We Do <laughs> X40 is not the first large format IDEX 3D printer that I've used, but is it the best? See, whenever I'm reviewing 3D printers, I'll oftentimes say that I'm looking for a diamond in the rough. And what I mean by that is that I'm looking for the one good one amongst all the less good ones that I've found. But in real life, diamonds are found in the rough. That is to say, they're found not looking like a diamond that you're used to thinking of them as. They look like a rock and you need to clean up and chip off and polish up that rock to make it look like a diamond. It takes time. It takes work. And the Weedoo X40 kind of is a diamond in the rough in both senses of the word. Now, in the sense of it being the one good one amongst a bunch of not good ones, of all of the large format IDEX 3D printers that I've used, the Weedoo is the one that I got after the Kickstarter, after the release, with all of the problems worked out of it compared to the ones that I've used before. The one thing I can say about the X40 is, yeah, it works. Oh, by the way, this is my new buddy. This is, well, the name was recommended online to call it Tony Sparks, and my kids love that so much that, well, that's Tony now. We'll be talking more about Tony later, but talking about the X40 from WeDo. Okay, hold, time out, guys. All right, listen, I know that the company named themselves We Do. It's not Weed O. It's We, as in like we get together. If you take a look at their slicer, it's called the Wii Builder, in the same way that the Nintendo Wii was called the Wii, as in we do things together. And that's that's what the we do means. We do things together together. It's collaborative. It's uplifting. It has nothing to do with recreational drugs that are exciting in the news right now and funny if you're 14 years old. I mean, I get it. It's kind of unfortunate that they spelled we with two e's in this case, but it wouldn't have been pronounced the same way if they didn't. Still, I choose to read this as we do things together. And the truth is, I'm actually kind of impressed with WeDo as a company. Yeah, granted, if you look at their roster of 3D printers, it's pretty clear that there's no one unified design. The F192 was built off of the old Replicator 1 design, iterated, and it's fine. I liked it, except for the fact that they tied you into their slicer, and I didn't want to have to use their slicer. And the Tina 2 was actually a really good mini 3D printer, and it continued to work for a long time, which is why I kind of preferred it over other mini 3D printers that I tried using, even though they locked down the firmware on that one and, and wouldn't let you use G-code commands to try and make it more accurate. And then there's the X40. And the X40, again, is a completely different design. They've tried something new, but they are basically working it themselves. They're trying to do the engineering themselves and they're trying to build their own slicer. Even though that slicer, it's rough. Using their slicer to me is a bit reminiscent of like trying to ride a newborn baby horse. It's like it's got all the parts that a full-size horse would have. They're just not very well developed and it really, you, you haven't figured out how to really control it yet. And I hate to be critical of any slicer because 90% of the problems that you have with a slicer boil down to, it's just not what I'm used to. But there's also something to be said for good software design, which puts the things that you want to do where you can find them. And that usually means putting it in three different places because people are going to look for it in different places, but not so with WeBuilder. With WeBuilder, you got to figure out how to do it their way. And it's a little bit frustrating, but in the end, I, I have to admit, yeah, you're right, Tony, it does work. The X40 was actually a Kickstarter 3D printer and it hit Kickstarter with a lot of promises 
And I'm not entirely sure that it fulfilled all of those promises. I mean, at the highest level, it fulfilled the promise of being a large format IDEX 3D printer. Large format IDEX 3D printer means that you are going to be able to make incredible things that you can't with any other 3D printer. You're going to be able to make large format things. You're going to be able to make things with two different materials in the same print, or you're going to be able to make things twice as fast because you're producing two copies of them at the same time, maybe even using mirror mode to get two halves of a thing so that you can print it twice as fast. And so in that regard, as far as the promise of being a large format IDEX 3D printer, sure, it did that and it works as that. But the thing about being an IDEX 3D printer is that with two nozzles, you have to tell the firmware where they are relative to each other. You have to calibrate those nozzles because maybe one's a little bit forward of the other because of some twist in the, in the threads of the nozzle. Or maybe one of them isn't exactly where it expects it to be on the carriage, or maybe one's a little bit higher than the other. So you have to change those settings in the firmware. And to do that, they've given you a couple of test prints to print that theoretically, you just print these out, look at which one is aligned the best and you input that number into the firmware and it does it for you. But here's some more of the roughness because this didn't work for me. And what I ended up having to do was just taking a test print with layers that are in different colors and looking at them and going, well, okay, looking at it this direction, it's a little bit more that direction. So let me change one of the numbers up. Then I did another print and if it was worse, I changed that number the other direction. And if it was better, I fine tuned it until it ended up just right. I was literally blind plugging and chugging until I finally got one that was lined up just the way that I wanted it. It's rough, but in the end, I can't deny that it works as well. It's got a large color touchscreen interface, and I'll tell you the truth, I like it. Not only does it work, but it's also really fun to see the preview of what you're printing on the screen there. That big plus, and I like it, it works great. It's got a removable heat bed with really neat little built-in clamps. No, no alligator clips on this one, it's just simple. However, it's also a bit of the roughness because this is a steel sheet and it's a really hard steel sheet. I'm finding it very difficult to flex this one and get my prints off. In the end, I usually just end up taking the prints off, putting it on a table and using a scraper to pop them off because this just doesn't work, not for smaller prints. It's rough, but as Tony is gonna remind me here in a second, Oh, and speaking of the IDEX process, in order to clean the nozzle out, they've put a little brush, not a metal brush, a normal little brush, but then they've also put these Delrin flaps on here that every time your nozzle goes in to clean it, clicks past those. And it, it sounds rough and it sounds abrupt, especially when it's doing it in the middle of a print and just whack your, your nozzle over there. But you know what? It works and it's actually pretty good, except for the fact that it's dumping the purge filament just off the side onto the table that you've got your 3D printer. It's a mess, you need to clean it up. And mind you, you can fix it. There are a couple of solutions that people have come up with for little trays for catching the, the purge as it goes out. And some of them mount on the frame and some of them mount right on the carriage and move with it. So yeah, I, I printed mine in pink and purple because if you're gonna make me 3D print a part to fix a problem that you didn't, I'm gonna shame you with bright colors so everybody knows that that's not stock. It also promised auto bed leveling and sure enough, on one of the nozzles, there's a bed sensor. However, when you fire up this 3D printer for the first time, they're going to instruct you to level the bed manually with the little screws that they have. Well, why do we have the screws if we have the bed level sensor? Because we have two nozzles. And if the bed is not at least relatively flat, especially relative to the X axis movement here, then when you bring in the second nozzle to do something like duplication mode or mirror mode and the bed is cocked, 
it's not going to work. The bed needs to be at least reasonably level. And so the bed level sensor here is less for correcting the level of the bed and more for checking your ability to level the bed properly. I've never seen that before. Well, kind of in the 192, but no, this is, this is a different application. It's brand new. It's, it's not the way it's done anywhere else, but in the end, yeah, it works. It's just weird and a part of the roughness of the X40. They also promised that you could start a print over the Wi-Fi, and I never got this feature to work. Yes, I got it to connect to the Wi-Fi. That worked, but when I tried to start a print over the Wi-Fi, in their WeBuilder slicer, there is a upload the print to the printer. And when I did that, the printer, it said it was receiving, but then it didn't start the print. And then when I went into the menu that was supposed to be for the Wi-Fi storage cache of the G-code, there was nothing there. So I don't know if this feature doesn't work. I don't know if maybe it just doesn't work on mine or if this is just one unfulfilled promise from the Kickstarter, but the Wi-Fi printing doesn't work. However, Wi-Fi printing, while it is really nice to be sitting at my computer, say, start a print and have the printer spring to life across the room, I really love that. It's not critical to the usage of the machine. You can still use it without that feature. It's just something nice to have, something that was promised into Kickstarter and something that, in my experience, wasn't delivered on. Not critical, but disappointing. They also promised video monitoring and sure enough it comes with a camera that is Wi-Fi enabled that if you have an app you can dial into it with the app and watch your print as it's going. And I also couldn't get that to work. Maybe maybe the Wi-Fi, maybe it's all just a Wi-Fi problem. I don't know. And again it's not something critical to the function of the printer. It prints, it produces stuff, you just can't, unfulfilled promise. They also promised filament out detection, but my filament out sensor was broken upon receiving it and was always reporting that the filament was out. And so that feature was disabled before I even got to use the 3D printer. And when I turned it on, I realized it didn't work. Now this allows me to talk though about their support because at this point I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to reach out to their support so that I can tell you guys, does we do support their 3D printers? And the answer is kind of, but it's rough. So most of their support actually goes through their Facebook page, which is an interesting place. And if you want to get a hold of them, you have to go to their Facebook page, then open up a Google spreadsheet and then put your problem, your serial number, and your personal email on a publicly accessible spreadsheet so that anybody else could get your email and then they'll email you about your support problem. That is really rough and no, Tony, you don't get to tell me that it works because that shouldn't be happening. But do they respond? Well, yes, kind of. See, I had two problems to report. One was the filament out sensor, and the other one was when I 3D printed printer blocks to test the accuracy of this 3D printer, and I printed them in mirror mode just to play with that option. The prints came out fine in the X, fine in the Y, but in the Z they were visibly squished and five millimeters too short on a 16 millimeter cube. Yikes. So in that matter, they contacted me and they said, hey, listen, just print a 30 millimeter cube and measure it and we'll see what we can do. And I printed the 30 millimeter cube and it wasn't off by as much. Well, wait a second, how come this one was off, but this one wasn't? And I thought, ah, maybe it was because I did it in mirror mode. Maybe when we're moving both motors, it's taking too much power from the Z axis so it can't move. I don't know, I was coming up with silly reasons. So I printed a couple of print -a block mega blocks. These are 32 millimeters tall, twice 16, right? And these also printed just fine. And I'm thinking, wait a second, maybe the bed drifted. 
Maybe during the printing of these smaller blocks, for some reason the springs released, the, the nuts kind of loosened up a little bit, and the bed was able to move up just a little bit during the printing process. That's really, really bad. Now there's two solutions to this. Solution number one is to get some better springs so that that doesn't happen. Solution number two is lock nut. So I put a lock nut washer underneath the nut and sure enough the bed held steady however that also had a problem where now i can't level the bed i can't loosen these nuts without really having to crank them because the lock nuts working against me that's my fault should have gone with the better springs that was rough but in the end i was able to find a solution for that one. Oh, by the way tony that that reminds me now that i've done that part you can have this They also promised into Kickstarter that it had quiet stepper motors, and I, I guess they're quiet. I can't hear them over the extremely loud case fan. Rough. They also promised into Kickstarter that it would have auto shutdown, which means if you leave it alone for a little while or if it finishes a print, it'll just turn itself off afterwards. Everything except for that noisy case fan and yeah it does but i feel like it turns itself off too fast like if i want to start another print i have to turn the printer back on every single time and that's kind of frustrating although okay admittedly yes they fulfilled their promise it has auto shutdown it doesn't stay on all the time but, but could we get that lengthened out to like an hour or something they also promised that this would be open open source and open to any slicer and sure enough i was able to 3d print on other slicers with this printer i did printed this one in cura however it came out super under extruded so i'm gonna have to fiddle with the settings in other slicers and this is not bad i mean i appreciate that they're making their own slicer to match their hardware and not making their hardware to match somebody else's slicer that is admirable that is something that i wish more printer companies would do even though like i said their slicer is one of the biggest roughest parts of using this printer because it's just so rough but it does work too so in the end would i recommend the we do x40 well, let me put it to you this way. It is a large format IDEX 3D printer that works. And in the end, despite the fact that I might have had some difficulty getting the Wi-Fi to work, despite the fact that I might not think that it really achieved all of its Kickstarter goals, I can't deny that like the Millennium Falcon, it's got it where it counts. And so, you know, for what it gives you the ability to create, I think you should look into the X40 from WeDo. Oh, and who's this little guy dancing around over here? Everybody say hello to Tony Sparks. Tony, pause up for just one second so I can show you to the people. Tony is a brachio arm from Arduino from here on up. But the brachio doesn't come with any sort of control system, so I used electro blocks to put some joysticks on Tony so that I can move him around and point him however I want and it also puts a nice place for the the control board to sit on there as well as well as just in general giving me some nice wire management underneath it. Electro blocks are a lot of fun and if you would like to make your own brachial arm with an electro block control platform you can actually go and download these files right now on Prusa Printer and try it out. Electroblocks are out there, they're free to use, just takes a little bit of time to embed some electronics in it and you're good to go. Okay, you are going to be put on shut up. I swear, you check one Facebook thing and all of a sudden Facebook's like, hold on, check me again, check me again, no! No, no, go away. I should just delete Facebook, I should. I should, but I'm not going to.